individual securities. This lecture presents concepts that are fundamental to understanding risk and return in the financial markets. We begin with the risk and return of individual securities and ask a basic question. Why is a security risky? A security is risky because there's uncertainty about the actual return that will be realized. And how can we describe this uncertainty? We can describe this uncertainty by doing three things. List all possible future states of the world. These are all possible future scenarios, alternative futures that could occur over a future period of time. Assign probabilities to the future states of the world. and assign state contingent returns to each possible future state of the world. This is the return the security will earn if that state actually happens. Now let's describe some uncertainty. We have five possible future states of the world. The economy may go into recession. It may be stagnant. We may have a mild expansion, or we may have a strong expansion, and the economy may boom. We assess the probability of these future states of the world, and assign state contingent returns. There's a 10% probability of a recession. In a recession, the security will earn negative 20%. In a stagnant economy, with a probability of 20%, the security will earn zero. A mild expansion, with a 40% probability, the security will earn 20%. In a strong expansion, with a probability of 20%, the security will earn 40%. If the economy goes boom, and that's a 10% probability, the security will earn 60%. So if we can list all possible future states of the world, determine their probabilities, and assign state contingent returns to each future state of the world, we can assign a probability distribution of possible future returns to the security. Let's plot the probability distribution in probability return space. The economy may go into recession. It may stagnate. We might have a mild expansion a strong expansion. The economy may go boom. Of course, there are many more possible future states of the world. And as we add more states, the distribution approaches a continuous distribution. A probability distribution can be assigned to all securities in the investment universe. So a security can be described by describing its probability distribution. So how can we describe a probability distribution to distinguish it from all other probability distributions? By its location and its dispersion in probability space. Our measure of the location of a probability distribution is the expected return. The expected return is a best unbiased estimate of the return we expect to earn over the future period of time. Our measure of dispersion is variance and standard deviation. Variance and standard deviation is a measure of the security's total risk. Risk is the possibility that the actual return will greatly differ from what was expected.
Therefore, risky securities have wider dispersions in their probability distributions, and safer securities have tighter dispersions of their probability distributions. The expected return is the best unbiased estimate of the return to be realized over a future period of time. We multiply the state contingent return by the probability of its state. Do that for all states and sum across all states to get the expected return. So let's calculate the expected return of our probability distribution. We multiply the probability of the state and the state contingent return for all states and sum across all states to get the expected return, 20%. And that's our best unbiased estimate of the return we expect to earn over that future period of time. Our measure of total risk is variance and standard deviation. To calculate the variance, we subtract the expected return from the state contingent return to get the deviation from expectation. We square the deviation from expectation, and this does two things. It gets rid of the sign, and it puts greater weight on the larger deviations. We multiply the probability of the state to the squared deviation. We do that in all states and sum across all states. So the variance is the expected squared deviation from expectation. And it's a measure of the uncertainty of a security's expected return. Standard deviation is a positive square root of the variance, and it can be thought of as a standardized version of the variance. Let's look at an example. We have a probability distribution, and our first step is to calculate the expected return of the probability distribution. We multiply each state contingent return by the probability of its state, and sum across all states to get the expected return. The expected return is 20%. For each state, we calculate the deviation from expectation. The state contingent return is negative 20%, and from that we subtract the 20% expected return. We square the deviation from expectation and multiply it by the probability of the state. Do that for all states. The variance is the expected squared deviation from expectation. So we sum the values in the last column to get the variance, 480% squared. To get the standard deviation, we take the positive root of the variance. Standard deviation is 